Hello, my name is Brittany and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Kentucky Department of Biology. And today I'm going to introduce to you a common tool in the discipline of ethology, an ethogram. An ethogram is a catalog or inventory of all the behaviors elicited by a species or an organism. And they are powerful tools, well, it's a powerful tool that provides us an objective way to quantify individual behaviors in response to different stimuli. For instance, how a prey may react to different predators, or how these reactions may change with different seasonal variation in climate. Three ethologists, Carl von Frisch, Nico Timbergen, and Con Conrad Lorenz, not only pioneered the field of ethology, but also made important connections between underlying physiological mechanisms and behavior. Their research on eliciting individual behavior and social organization in animals was so pivotal that the three were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace in Physiology or Medicine in 1973. As a scientific community, we've built on their research, and incorporating ethograms is a, into laboratory studies is a powerful way to understand how different physiological mechanisms may affect behavior. For instance, we can use an ethogram to quantify how an organism may react to different stimuli when being fed different diets, or how overall activity may change with variation to light and dark and affecting the underlying circadian rhythm. So now that I've provided you with some background on ethograms, let me introduce you to an example using my study species, elk. When developing an ethogram, the important thing to consider is time. Time is our independent variable, and we will be quantifying behavior as frequency of time either overall frequency of a behavior or portion of time spent eliciting that behavior. However you decide the time segment will depend on your hypothesis of interest and your study species or organism if you're in Ohio. Let's say we are interested in the overall activity of elk, Cervus canadensis. Lucky for us, full ethograms exist for elk as well as for a variety of other organisms, either in books um, or peer-reviewed literature. And so we can go visit these and pull out the subset of behaviors that we're interested in to develop our particular ethogram. If an ethogram for your organism doesn't exist, the best way to start developing one is just to start observing your organism. And write it down what you see. So for us, we can pull out some primary behaviors, overall activity, travel, foraging, resting, so if they're bedded down, or vigilance. So when and how long should we observe them? I work in a completely wild population, so I'm limited by the areas that I can actually watch elk as well as human disturbance around the area. They're a crepuscular species, so they're predominantly active at dawn and dusk. So in this case, the biology of the organism helps me narrow down the specific times I might want to start observing them. To begin understanding your question, let's start with an hour of observation. So, 60 minutes. And we can simply mark within that 60 minutes every time we see an individual or a focal individual if you just want to focus on one animal, traveling, foraging, bedded, or being vigilant. Then we have a segment of time that we can actually divide and portion out our behavior. So the frequency in a 60 minute period that individuals were spent eliciting each individual behavior. If you want to get more specific, we could actually break this down into 10 minute time segments. So instead, Ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, etc. In, go ahead and scan however many animals you're watching, or even if it's just your one, and then write down what they're doing at that individual time point. That's another way to portion out the time segment. One other way, if you want to get a little more specific, is actually time spent doing each behavior. So instead of frequency, ten minutes in, say one is traveling. And we continue to watch that focal individual and say they travel until 35 minutes in. Well, that falls in between two of our time points. And so they've traveled until minute 30, if we're going to keep it at these 10 minute time segments. So there's a variety of ways that you can actually specify within your ethogram based on these time components to really get at your hypothesis. But again, that's going to depend on your hypothesis and your study speed.